This stuff is so forgotten, even the hipsters don't know about it. APS film, we're looking at it today. Welcome back, DP Review TV viewers. Chris Nichols here from DP Review. Uh, pardon the noise, you can probably see the giant machinery digging up there in the background. But today we have a very interesting history lesson for you because we're looking at APS film. Now what the hell is APS? Well, it's the advanced photo system and you'd be forgiven for not knowing what it is because it honestly came and went so quickly. It's got an interesting history and I want you to join me today as we go through it. I swore I would never do unboxing videos and here I am about to unbox these cameras but I think it makes sense for the context of this video. These are our weapons of choice today. Now first off, in this lovely oak humidor I've got a Canon ELF limited edition gold plated little Ixus cam here. Check that out. We were thinking like okay a point and shoot's great but I really want some of the more capability in SLR. So we went out and we actually bought this Nikon Pronea 600i. And I've got a triple pack of Fuji Advanced A200 film here, APS, expired 2004, free Big Mac. I am definitely cashing that in. So let's unbox this camera and get out here and shoot. Worth the price of admission right there. Look at that sexy blue strap. So these batteries expired nine years ago. Here's hoping, let's see what we get. Look at this, dual dials, quite nice. And what's under this tiny plastic easily lost thing? Oh, Threaded cable release. <laughs> How's the focus there, Chris? Actually pretty damn quick. Now not that 35 millimeter film was hard to load, but this whole APS format was really, you know, marketed as a foolproof way of loading it. Everything automatic, no way to screw it up. Does that look cool or what, Jordan? Or what? <laughs> All right, so this is the situation. Today I'm hitting it with my Pronea 600i. That's my professional option. I've got my Canon Nix's pocket camera here as well. And I think I can handle any situation as long as I don't need telephoto, ultra wide, fast apertures, or anything over ISO 200. So yeah, really gonna be quite limited today, but it should be fun. You know, it's interesting. I mean, if you think about it, how many of you have heard about the Nikon Pronea SLR system or the Minolta Vectis or the Canon IAC? But I bet a lot of you out there are familiar with this shape and this name, the Canon ELF or in Europe, the Canon Ixis. I mean, these were super popular. And even after film disappeared, Canon continued to use this name and shape and design of camera in their digital formats. You know, the compact manufacturers are really the ones responsible for keeping a APS alive as long as they did and Canon was by far the biggest player in that and you can see that heritage transferring over into the digital world. Hey everyone it's Jordan jumping in here quickly to let you know we're about to start looking at some images here and I got to tell you we got back the images from the ELF expired in 2004 turned out pretty nice little low contrast on it but not bad at all however all the stuff Chris shot on the Pronea as you can see here it says to expired, color went off, and that is certainly the case. Okay, so this photo I'm gonna call a study of greens. We debated converting these to black and white, but you know what, we're just going to show you the yellow and magenta versions of them, just so you know what's about to happen. Enjoy. We had a loyal fan who just, you know, they weren't gonna use it. They're like, hey, why don't you guys have fun with this? So we really appreciate that. But this camera, well, we went out, we paid our hard-earned money on this. We went to a local camera store, which is renowned for having a lot of brand new gear still sitting in boxes. And lo and behold, they have, this is one of five Pronea 600 eyes they have. So if you wanna get your own, we can tell you where to go buy one. And uh, the sticker on the box is $5.99 for the kit. But uh, you know, we got it for a 10th of that price, I think because you know, by this point, 
what are you gonna do with these things, hey? So I just took a shot of these signs knocked over and it really, it's interesting shooting now in this HD format, a 16 by nine aspect ratio. And that's actually the native format for APS film. But one of the unique features was that you could set three different ratios. You could do APS-H, which is your high def 16 by nine ratio. You could do APS-C, which is a classic two, three ratio. And you could also do APS-P, which was a panorama. Now, the C and P modes do crop the sides or top and bottom. Now, one thing I'm also noticing on this SLR, what it basically gives you is just grid lines with red arrows to try to remind you, hey, stay within these grids, but it's easy to forget that. Now, on the Canon Ixis, when I change the format, it actually crops the viewfinder and that keeps you from messing up a lot of shots. Now, here's something that you might kind of think about. Okay. APS, that stands for Advanced Photo System, it's the film we're talking about, but don't they also use that in sensors? I mean, APS-C sensors, for example, APS-H sensors, for example, and they absolutely do. And in fact, they pretty much just borrowed the name. They kept the Advanced Photo System moniker. APS Films classic format is about 25 and a half by 16.7. Then you go to somebody like Nikon or Sony, their sensors are 24 millimeters by 16 millimeters. Then you go to Canon and it's like 22 and a half by 15 millimeters. I mean, they're just all over the place. Whew, but does it end there? Not remotely, because then you've got companies like Canon making their APS-H sensor that they stuck in their Canon 1D cameras. Well, that had a 1.3 crop factor, way bigger than any of the film stuff we're talking about here. It gets so confusing. So let's just do it this way. After APS film died, the manufacturers did whatever the hell they wanted using the APS name. So APS is basically gonna be, I don't know, anything smaller than full frame, but bigger than micro four thirds. Yeah, let's go with that, we'll keep shooting. Now it's funny, but Jordan and I both worked in photo developing labs, but I was based in London, the UK and Europe, and Jordan was based here in Canada and North America. And it's funny because APS as a system actually kind of took off in Europe. It was well received. Now in London, it was interesting because I would say we got about 50% 35 mil and 50% APS. It was really quite popular. And I think because the cameras could be so compact and small, but it also represented some convenience for the customer. They could actually stop on a lot of cameras mid roll and then resume at the right frame when they wanted to keep shooting. And after you got the film developed, it would just come out of the cartridge, go through the machines. It would actually go back into the APS cartridge after that. So you had something to keep your negatives nice and safe. Overall, it was a very interesting development. It just never took off, especially North America. Oh, and I look at the back of the camera like I expect to see something there. You know, it's funny, I'm actually really enjoying shooting this 16 by nine format for photography. It's refreshing actually. And uh, it's almost in a way kind of regrettable that 16 by nine never really took off as a picture format. I think it was a conspiracy from all the frame makers who are saying, yeah, TVs are going 16 nine, but we've got all these four by six frames in the warehouse. What are we gonna do about those? So conspiracy. No digital rotating screen makes old men grumpy. Now, and I have to get up, ouch. I'm doing a puddle photo because people are complaining about Chris's lack of puddle photos. I don't like this photo. Let's finish the roll. So I've just finished my first roll here and it's got this handy little numbering system I wanna tell you about. So number one indicator means it's a brand new roll of film. Number two means it's partially exposed and you can resume later. Number three, the little X shows that it's fully exposed but not processed yet. And then number four will actually show when the film's totally processed and now you've got developed negatives inside. Oh, and see this little tab here? You can poke this in so that your camera doesn't accidentally try to shoot an already processed roll of film, very much like a VHS tape. Do I have to explain VHS tapes now to everybody or we're, we're good? So as you can see, the rain's really starting to come down now, but I do have a couple rolls ready to go. So we're gonna head into our local place here downtown. Luckily, the lab manager remembers APS film, so he knows how to develop it. But even he commented that some of his staff have no idea what's going on. I've never seen it before. Let's get in there. APS was designed to be a very modern system and a system that all the manufacturers got behind to build. 
What happened to it? Why did it decline so quickly? Well, really the answer is digital. Canon's EOS D30 came out relatively shortly after that, sort of the first mainstream widely used APS-C sensor digital SLR ever. And you know, cameras like that and the subsequent compact digitals that came out really just destroyed APS. But I hope what you got from this whole thing today was that APS never really went away. I mean, we gotta think about a lot of the innovations that were developed for this system that then carried on to make digital possible. I mean, we've already talked about how these small compact cameras paved the way for the new digital compacts that we enjoyed. And you know, it wasn't just about design and naming, and it wasn't just about putting a tiny digital sensor into these cameras, it was also the fact that most compact cameras up to this point were made for 35 millimeter film. And when this format came out, the manufacturers got a lot of practice in developing smaller, high quality lens assemblies that would then lend themselves very nicely to smaller digital sensors. And even the APS SLRs, which were so unsuccessful and for that very reason, this might even be the first time you've ever seen or heard of one in our video, they still had their place because it's all that research and development that went into it. I mean, consider things like the Canon IX SLR, the Nikon Pronea SLR, they both used Canon and Nikon's full frame SLR lineup. Both manufacturers even started making lenses specifically for the smaller APS format, which would then they morph into our current DX and EFS lenses. All of that research and development is what we take for granted now in our digital SLRs today. And so maybe after this you know, little history lesson, you've gotten to see that APS has forgotten a film format as it was, really was instrumental in opening up our markets to the digital photography era. And so hopefully you enjoyed this. Let us know in the comments below. Let us know if you ever had one of these yourself. Maybe you rocked one of these in your earlier days. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram. Tweet to us. Let us know your comments below. And please subscribe. We're so close to 100,000. We just need that final push. Please help us out. We'd really appreciate it. Until very soon, we'll see ya.